everybody. Today we're in the kitchen because we are going to be making a brand new recipe, but most importantly, we're going to be trying a Harry Potter inspired recipe. So I have here the unofficial Harry Potter cookbook. I just found it online. So today we're going to be making a beef casserole recipe. One of the coolest parts about this is that this book will tell you which Harry Potter book and in which chapter this recipe is inspired from. So for the beef casserole that we're going to be making today, um, it says that you can see Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, chapter 16. So of course I pulled out my copy of the Goblet of Fire and I went to chapter 16 and looked around to see where did they talk about a beef casserole. And sure enough, they did. For this hardcover version of the book, uh, it's on page 265 and it says, they ended up having lunch with Hagrid, though they didn't eat much. Hagrid had made what he said was a beef casserole, but after Hermione unearthed a large talent in hers, she, Harry, and, Ra and Ron rather lost their appetites. So I'm really excited to try this recipe. I've never made beef casserole before, and I've also never made a Harry Potter inspired recipe before. So um, I'm going to get started on this, and I'm gonna be making this for dinner. And if all goes well, I'm also going to be making some dessert later, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna be doing that, so I'm gonna try. Let's, let's see how this goes, and if this goes well, then I'll try a dessert too. The first thing we do is have to brown up our meat. I was supposed to do this in two batches, but I accidentally only did it in one. Do you like my new pink cutting board? It's so cute. Okay, I just had to show that. So I'm turning over the meat just to make sure it browns evenly. And remove the meat from the pan. Then after all the meat is out of the pan, I wiped out the pan with a paper towel and heated up some olive oil. And then I added our onion and our celery. And I kind of did that a little bit weird, but I didn't want to pour all the mushrooms in. The recipe did not call for garlic, but I love garlic, so I added some in. It's at this point I realized I was supposed to be using my Gryffindor spatula from Williams-Sonoma because it's so fun and Harry Potterish, and I've never used it before, but I had been using my pink one. So anyway, I switched over to my Gryffindor spatula. And then after things had been sauteing for a few minutes, I added three tablespoons of flour and mixed it in really well so that you couldn't see the flour anymore. Then I added in kind of slowly in batches, three cups of chicken broth. To the chicken broth, I add one tablespoon of tomato paste. And I like using the tomato paste in tubes rather than cans. Then I add the mushrooms, some salt and pepper, I give everything a good mix and let it come to a boil. Then after it's been boiling for a minute or two, I add all the meat back in Then again, give everything a good mix because now we're gonna put the lid on and pop it in the oven. It cooks for two hours at 350 degrees. So a while into the cooking of the beef casserole, I decided to make my side for this and I'm going to be making mashed potatoes, but also adding cauliflower because I wanna lighten up the mashed potatoes a little bit. So now the beef casserole is out of the oven after two hours of cooking. It has thickened up so much and it smelled amazing. Ooh, extreme close up, but it smelled so good. I just had to show you what it looked like close up. And as you can probably tell, that pan is gonna be a lot of fun to clean. So I put the lid back on so that it would stay warm until I was ready to eat. And in the meantime, I mashed up my potatoes and cauliflower and I added butter, salt, and pepper. And now it's finally time to eat, so I served myself up a nice portion of my mashed potato cauliflower mix and topped it with our beef casserole.
We're finally done with the recipe. It's dinner time. You might notice a big lighting change from what I was talking before, um, but that's because it's nighttime now, so I had to switch around my lights. But it's time to try our beef casserole. Not the fastest recipe in the world, but hopefully the results are worth it. The beef seems really soft just from when I've been scooping it and I broke up a few pieces. It seems really soft, so I'm hoping that it is really soft. And as you also saw, um, I am serving mine over a mix of cauliflower and white potatoes. Um, I think the book said you could also do like rice or you know whatever you feel like or egg noodles, but I just felt like putting it over those because that's what I had on hand. So I'm gonna try a piece of the beef. Here we go, our very first Harry Potter recipe, beef casserole. Mmm, I like that. I'm gonna try it with a piece of the mushroom and maybe some of the onion and celery and beef and get a little more of the gravy part. Okay, for real, this is good. When I was reading the um, ingredients, it didn't seem like anything complicated, but this is really good. I like this and the beef is nice and soft and easy to chew. If meat is too chewy or tough for me, ugh, it's just the worst, but the meat is really soft because we seared it first and then it cooked for so long in the oven. It got nice and soft. And even though this is not the world's quickest and easiest recipe to make just because it takes so many, like so long, and there are several steps, this is really good. And I could eat this again, and I will eat this again. I would add more veggies to this the next time I make it. So next time I would be interested in adding also, besides the celery mushrooms, because I'm fine with them, I would also add peas and carrots. Um, but then I worry would it be too beef stewish? You can tweak this, I'd say, to however you like. Um, but that, this like gravy that's with it is so good. And the meat is so soft. Okay, I'm going to go eat this and enjoy myself, finish up my dinner. And then in a little while, I'm going to be back because I'm going to be making dessert. Okay, the last step for the evening is dessert. So I found a homemade frozen butterbeer recipe on Pinterest, and that's what we're gonna try. So let me grab a few more ingredients. So I added some ice, a scoop of vanilla ice cream, butterscotch caramel instead of just regular butterscotch ice cream topping, and some cream soda. And the recipes that I found on Pinterest, of course, give you detailed exact amounts of everything to add, but I tweaked it to what I thought you know, was more my taste. So I kind of eyeballed it on the ice and the cream soda, and then I tasted it while I was making it, and went back and added even more ice and cream soda. So you can really um, customize this for how much of everything that you like and how um, frothy or slushy you'd like it to be, how icy, or maybe you'd prefer it more like the regular butterbeer, the non-frozen butterbeer version at the Universal Studios parks. Oh, and I also added some more of that butterscotch caramel. And I'm serving my homemade butterbeer in my butterbeer mug cup from the Wizarding World. So here's the homemade whipped cream that I made for myself and I also added some of the warm butterscotch caramel to it. And I'll just put a few nice sized dollops right on top. And to top it off, I am garnishing this with a genuine fudge fly. So these fudge flies are sold at the Wizarding World and my sister has just brought them home. So I wanted to try one of these little chocolate guys. Here's my finished product and it looks really good. It doesn't look exactly like it does at the Wizarding World, but it does look really good still. So my homemade frozen butterbeer concoction is all ready. And just so you know, the reason that I did not use a recipe from the unofficial Harry Potter cookbook is because there is no butterbeer recipe that I saw in the unofficial Harry Potter cookbook. So if I missed it and you have that cookbook, please let me know. But I didn't see one in there. So I just found one on Pinterest that sounded good to me and that's what I went with. It does not look the exact same as it does in the parks, but I really don't mind as long as it tastes good. It really does taste good. I think I might prefer it slightly icier, so just even a few more ice cubes in the, than I put in, and I thought I put in plenty, but I'd like it a little bit icier because then it would be closer to the consistency of the frozen butter beer at the parks. 
but I am in no way complaining. And don't get me wrong, I like butterscotch, but I just don't usually have it in really large quantities. And I trust how they make these at the parks, but I didn't quite trust myself enough to make it with just regular butterscotch. So that's why I picked up the butterscotch caramel topping to kind of have a nice middle ground. So um, I can't imagine you'd go wrong either way. And I could just sit here and eat the whipped cream and the uh, butter beer drink all in one like this with my spoon all night. And apparently, <laughs> apparently that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm also going to try for the first time a little fudge fly. So I've never had a fudge fly before, but my sister just brought these home from Universal. So I'm gonna try one. Not bad, a little on the plain side. Just kind of plain little piece of chocolate. But it's automatically made better because it's Harry Potter, so. So clearly, uh, I have my plans for the rest of the evening. I'm just gonna go sit and enjoy my butter beer. And you wanna know what the saddest part of all this is? It's that my husband likes neither butter beer nor caramel. So I can't even share this with him. I mean, what a shame, just an absolute shame. I have to drink all this by myself. I just, I feel awful, I really do. Trying to make Harry Potter recipes at home, so far for me, is off to a really good start because I know I can make this butter beer for dessert anytime and love it. And I would definitely make that beef casserole again. So I know that's only two Harry Potter recipes so far, but so far so good. So I hope to make more of the Harry Potter recipes that are in the unofficial Harry Potter cookbook again in the future. And when I do, I will hopefully make a video about it and share it with you. So if you have any Harry Potter uh, recipes that you would like to recommend, please feel free to do that in the comments. Or if you have been um, looking through the unofficial Harry Potter cookbook, maybe you have it and have some suggestions for ones that like are really good or ones that maybe didn't work out for you, please feel free to share that as well. So with all that said, I'm going to go enjoy my dessert. Thanks very much for watching and I'll talk to you later. Bye.